All right, hello everybody and welcome to ESA Corona Relief. I am Argic. I am taking over donation reading from Murgy here. Thanks very much, Murgy, for that. And uh, hopefully you're all ready for some great Crash Team racing as we are going to be taking over with Hypno Shark here. But before we get in, we've got two donations here. We've got a $10 donation from Anonymous saying, sorry for missing the train earlier. Don't be sorry for missing the train. You've just started yourself a new one this is a new ten dollar train get your ten dollar donations in here remember that we are raising money here for save the children and we are so so very close to fifteen thousand dollars can we smash that by the end of this run of course we can and don't forget as well we also have a current bid war going on for the next run coming up after crash team racing which is sega sonic the hedgehog we've got a character choice bid war you can be mighty the armadillo ray the flying squirrel or the one and only sonic the hedgehog currently ray is winning with 150 dollars mighty not too far behind with 120 dollars and 54 cents and sonic is currently in last with 100 dollars but that can all change with your donations and we also have one other donation here. It's a $20 donation from Dameron saying, this donation goes out to my friends, one who has recovered and one who is currently sick. Stay healthy. And yes, everybody, do stay healthy. But with those complete, without further ado, here is Hypnoshark ready for some Crash Team Racing. Take it away, my friend. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, as Argic says, welcome everybody to Crash Team Racing. Um, we may as well just start the run now and I'll get into uh, the backstory of this game, if you will. Uh, once we've started, but okay, here we go. So timer starts in three, two, one, go. Okay, so before I get into any of the driving in this game, like the mechanics or anything like that, I'll just go over the story because it, it's a real tear, tear jerker. Excuse me. Um, really, just you can tell Naughty Dog, the makers of this game, really cared about the story when making it. So basically, there's an alien called Nitrous Oxide who plans on taking over the entire world and turning it into a concrete parking lot and we have to stop him whilst just doing races, beating races and beating him in the end. So that's the aim. You're going to see a lot of this during this game to get onto the mechanics. Sliding in the cart, drifting as we'll call it, and uh, doing mini turbos. As you can see in the bottom right there is a little boost meter under the speedometer. Um, we're going to be filling that up to as far as it can go and then hitting L1 um, after hitting R1 to start the drift. Um, basically, we're going to be referring to this as uh, reserves, um, which is basically our right to keep the speed that we currently have. So the more times we boost, the more time we enable ourselves to have to keep this speed. So. Because I went off that turbo pad that you're going to see again here, this turbo pad here, I now have the fastest speed that you can get outside of um, glitches. Um, and by boosting, we're going to just keep hold of that. Um, I didn't even mention this shortcut. Uh, it's the first shortcut in the run. It's pretty automatic. It's not too hard. Um, so I didn't even mention it at first, but yeah. So that's crash cove uh, the first level in the game also i just want to mention as well that if you've seen speedruns of ctr in the past uh you may be wondering why i'm using dingo dial and not coco um that's because in around mid late 2018 after <laughs> nearly two decades of thinking that coco and engine were the uh with the fastest characters uh for the adventure mode speedrun um, it turns out that after finding strats in certain levels, uh, Dingo Dial is faster by about 10 seconds. However, if you're starting out with this game, don't play as Dingo Dial. It's very, very hard, like way harder than playing as Coco or Engine. So just don't do it. The reason for that, by the way, is because of uh, Dingo Dial's really bad turn stat. Um, so getting back to the mechanics of the game here, as you can see, I just hopped a lot um that's because we can store the momentum of a downhill like so and then hop out of it to maintain that speed this is called speed ghosting um i don't know why it's called that uh the makers of the names of tech in this game were about 10 years old when they made them so 
yeah, it, very strange names for some tech in this game. It was also about 10 years ago when it got made, so, you know, a long time ago. But we're aiming for um, 23, 24 laps in this level. A 25 first lap isn't too bad, because you don't really have too much speed at the start of um, the start of lap one. That's a really good lap, too. Um, but yeah, but this track basically showcases excellently what speed ghosting is and how it can be very, very fast, because just doing this, holding L1 while spamming R1, um, is way quicker than drifting if you utilize the momentum of the downhill effectively. That's a really good Rouge Tubes, no complaints from me. Um, as will the next track actually, the next track, Mystery Caves, um, which some might argue is the hardest track in the, uh, the first hub world. I should mention that there are four hub worlds, each with four tracks in them. Um, and five boss fights, so 21 tracks in total. Um, yeah, as I was saying, some people might argue that this is the hardest uh, track in Hub 1. I disagree, but it's still very difficult, um, considering it's the third track in the game. So, okay. Um, this track will also show off uh, the intended feature of this game. Uh, speed ghosting is not intended. Um, Wumper. So as you can see, next to the lap count, nice one crash getting in my way. <laughs> um, as you can see, next to the lap count, there is a uh, a Wumper counter. Um, every one Wumper I have speeds my cart up by 0.2%. Um, all the way up until nine, um, and then the ten Wumpers actually does pretty much nothing in terms of. Uh, the speed run. Um, all it does is make our items better, but items are not going to be that important in the speed run, um, except for in one track, which we'll get to later. But um, I'll talk about what I just did more uh, on lap three there. But uh, there's a little thing in this game called propulsions, where if you jump off of like not a specific pixel because there are tons of little pixels that you can use to get the same effect but basically just jumping off a correct pixel which will give you tons of height um so you jump and then jump again off the pixel and that basically just gives you tons of height i did one there for example um because basically on an uphill slope um you don't want to be just driving up it normally like that um, you want to be jumping off it because obviously going uphill is slow, so you don't really want to do that. Um, so speed ghost here, very nice. And I have 10 wumpers, so honestly this hasn't been a terrible mystery caves. That's very nice. Oh my goodness, that's very nice. Very good mystery caves, especially lap 3. This might be a 36 lap 3 actually, which is very good. Um, it's what we want ideally. That is an unbelievable lap three. Um, okay, I'm very happy with this run so far. <laughs> um, so the next track, um, three down, one to go before the first boss, Sewer Speedway. This track, if you've played the remake of this game, Nitro Fueled, um, you, you may have some bad memories of this track when the game first came out because the shortcut in this level, in the remake at least, didn't really function <laughs> until it got patched. Um, here, however, it works just fine. Um, and again, it's another track where we'll hopefully, if all things go to plan, be getting 10 Wumpa and uh, some speed ghosts along the way. Uh, this is also really the first track that has cycles that actually mean anything. Uh, the barrel cycles in this level, uh, as you'll see them here. Uh, these are on a cycle that is 100% consistent all the time, uh, which is nice because it means you can memorize them. Um, as I just get a speed ghost there. Also, I should mention, you can tell that I've got a speed ghost because the speedometer is all the way like maxed out in the bottom right there. Now it's not, so I no longer have one, but that's how you can tell. Um, but these barrel cycles are consistent, which is very nice for us, uh, which means we can just tell where they are after doing this shortcut. So this one should be just going, yeah. 
And then this one should also... Maybe... This might catch me, actually. I'm a little bit scared about this. Okay, good. It wasn't quite fast enough. Get the speed ghost here. Very nice. So, yeah. Hub 1 is overall pretty technical in terms of speed ghosts. You'll see a lot less speed ghosts, actually, in Hub 2. But Hub 2 more than makes up for that with... Uh, probably... Yeah, I would say the hardest track in the early game, for sure. As I said, there's uh, four hub worlds, so... The first two I count as the early game, basically. Unfortunate, but I didn't uh, jump multiple times there. Because sometimes, when you're trying to froggy, that's what we call um, mashing, like uh, the jump button while holding L1 to maintain the speed ghost. Um, sometimes if you're just on the wrong terrain or the wrong pixels on the terrain, um, your jumps will just get eaten and you'll lose your speed ghost really fast, which is unfortunate, but it happens, so. As you just saw in that cutscene there, uh, the first boss of this game is Ripperoo. Um, the only real difference between this and the, uh, Ruse Tubes playthrough, the second track that we played, is that... Ripperoo puts down TNTs, and this will be a theme with bosses. So, as I said, there's four bosses in the game and a final boss. Um, also, let me just concentrate on trying to snipe the Wumpa box. <laughs> oh my god, I did it! Did it in a marathon, the Wumpa box snipe. So basically, if you pull a bomb or something like that, you can snipe a Wumpa crate. Um, that was that was very nice, because usually you wouldn't have Wumpa on a... On Ruse Tube, so... But that's very cool to get in a marathon. I like that. But, um... As I say, there's... There's four bosses in this game. And then a final boss. And all of them have their own gimmick. So Ripperoo shoots out TNTs if you're behind him. Which, if we're fast enough, we'll actually catch up to. Um... As we nearly lap him. Um... The boss after that, Papu Papu, uh, throws out potions... Komodo Joe, the boss after that, shoots out uh, TNT and Nitro. And Pinstripe, the last boss before the final boss, shoots out bombs. So, each boss has their own gimmick, but usually as long as you're ahead of them, and you're a speedrunner, so you should be, um, it really isn't that much of a, of a uh, problem. So, not a bad first hub for sure. Um... So, now we've got to make our way to the second hub world. This is the longest piece of hub movement in the game. Um, because we're actually going to pass through a fifth hub uh, that is only used for the max percent completion categories in this game, such as 101%. Um, which is the 100% equivalent in this game. So, here's the hub world. You won't be seeing this until the final boss, because the little star on the minimap is the final boss. Which we're going to need four keys for. And you get a key by defeating a boss. So I'm not going to be seeing this world for a little bit. This tech right here. Um, is a U-turn. That's the first time you've seen it in the run. Um, you'll be seeing it again. In the third track of this hub world. Um, but basically what that is. Is if you hit. Down a direction. Either left or right and square. After hopping. Um, you can turn really sharply, even with a character like Dingo, who doesn't have good turn. The drawback to this, however, is that you lose your reserves, which is obviously your main way of keeping speed. So it's only really used in times where you absolutely need it. It's very rarely used, but when it is used, uh, we try as best we possibly can um, to, to get the reserves back, like, as soon as we've done it. So, that's what we try and do. Um... This mind if I jump oh. in with a oh. donation? Uh, yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, go so for we've, it. So uh, we've got a few here, but we've got a $5 donation from Rain KJ saying, Hey Hypno, it's your editor here. Good luck on the run. You're going to crush it. And remember to talk about the mist. Will do, buddy. And uh, we've also got a, uh, a nice big $100 donation from Shadow Wraith saying, Good luck on getting the 49 this run, Mr. Streamer. Brilliant. I mean, of, of course, of course I will. 49's free and all that, so yeah, of course, of course. <clears throat> but yeah, um, so th this track is, uh, 
You may have seen it on lap two and maybe lap one. I forget because yes. Um, but this is the track that I was referring to where if you get an item that you can throw forward, um, you can break down a wall and just hello missile. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Um, you can get an item that you can throw forward and break down a wall to skip a turn. It saves about two seconds every time you do it. It's the main piece of RNG in the run. Um, the pieces of RNG in this run are quite scattered. Like, there's not too many, and they don't mean too, too much. Um, occasionally, it will, like, cost a run, but that's pretty rare. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. But I think I got two out of three there. So that's really not bad. That's like average to good RNG. So I'll take that for sure. Okay. So now we have Coco Park. I'm in third place, which could have meant that I could have gotten a uh, Uka Mask, which if you've played Mario Kart is like the star power up. Um, it saves about two seconds if you get it, but we used to think it was a 1% chance. Now I'm more leaning on the side of about 5-10% because I've gotten it way too often for it to be 1%. But, yeah, this track used to be really boring, however, with uh, the introduction of Dingo being the main character for speedruns, it's introduced a lot of speed ghosts that weren't really relevant before. Um, lots of, like, stuff that's used in time trials, like ILs of this game, individual level runs, um, that are obviously... Uh, in terms of precision, more optimized than the speedrun, because obviously speedrun you have to do all the levels consecutively, whereas a time trial can just reset and not have to worry about anything really. Um, but for example, this speed ghost here, down the hill, into the grass, wasn't really a thing until probably this year um, in a speedrun, so that's a cool little... Uh, bit of information there that that was i don't think anyone did that uh until this year so that's a cool strat um okay next uh next track is papu's pyramid this is definitely the hardest track in the entirety of uh the first two hubs and you have to play it twice so and it's harder with dingo as well um it's way easier with coco which is Again, if you're starting out with learning this game, you should uh, absolutely use Coco and not Dingo, because it's way easier. And Dingo only saves 10 seconds, but yeah. So, this is going to be the other time we use U-turning in, uh, in the first two hubs. Uh, because these turns are way too tight. Oops. Uh, you're supposed to hit that boost pad. Um, those turns are way too tight. And... Uh, Actually, I'll keep talking after I go for this really hard shortcut without speed because I didn't hit the turbo pad. Okay, nice. Um, that's a really like weird shortcut to do without speed. Um, that's called the Papu's Ultra. It's uh, it's pretty hard and it's especially hard with Dingo because your turn stat just isn't good, um, which means this part coming up, the first part of it, dropping down onto this part of the track and then jumping up is really hard. Hello AI. <laughs> Hello CPUs. Um, but yeah, you're supposed to, as I was saying, um, you're supposed to do three mini turbos here, two mini turbos here, and then you turn here um, and land on the boost pad just like that. That's the ideal strat and that's pretty much the only fast way to do the turns with Dingo. Oh my gosh. Okay, ho hold on. Okay, if I'd made that, it would have been a minor miracle. That's fine. Go for the backup. Nice R1 input. Okay, this is going swimmingly. Oh my goodness. Right. Insert, this has never happened before marathon quote here. Insane Papu's Pyramid. <laughs> okay, well, there goes that. Um, that was about 20 seconds, 23 seconds-ish, just randomly thrown down the drain. No biggie. Um, so yeah, there is just a proof A of that track being really, really hard with Dingo. Um, 
because that shortcut is just incredibly difficult with his turning. Um, we activate that cutscene there, just as an aside. We activate that cutscene there because you have to activate it later anyway. And for some reason, um, Uka Uka hints um, appear quicker if you've just gotten out of another Uka Uka hint. So, and as there's only eight uh, of them on the podium after a race, we do it there because it saves about five seconds and he spawns in really fast. So, that's why we do it there as opposed to like hub three or four. Um, this track, Dingo Canyon, um, named after the best character in the game, of course, which must mean it's the best track. Um, it's... Again, it, this was another track similarly to Coco Park, the level two levels ago, where it was pretty boring until we implemented like Dingo's faster time trial strats, uh, and all of a sudden it's like a pretty hard level where that sand shortcut that you saw at the beginning of lap two um, is all of a sudden like half a second faster than the way we used to do it and the way we used to do it was really easy but now we're trying to save frames and yeah all of a sudden this track becomes a, a ba basically a slept on run killer um, but this is going pretty well so far I gotta say uh, nice speed ghost there again 26 is the uh, is the god lap um, I would say but Mid low 27s are absolutely fine. That's scary. Okay, now we're fine. <laughs> yeah, it's an excellent lap three, for example. Um, yeah, not not bad at all. All right, let's see if we can redeem ourselves here. So this is the second boss of the game, Papu Papu. Um, as previously mentioned, the only difference between this and the trophy is that he's going to put out uh, potions, which are going to be annoying on uh, lap two, I believe. Um, because that short, that shortcut, sorry, uh, that, uh, we were going for and failing miserably on lap three, um, he can put potions in the way of us going for that, and that can be really annoying, so we can, like, have to navigate kind of around his potions, whilst also making the shortcut, it's very, very nerve-wracking. Uh, is the lap two Papu's Ultra Ultra Shortcut? All right, that's more like it. Wow, <laughs> there you go. Insane. I remembered how to play the video game. Yeehaw. Um, but yeah. So this lap shortcut coming up here is the one we're trying to not be scared by, I guess. That grass propulsion there. I forgot to mention that because I was too caught up with this shortcut. That's the potion. That's fine. Um, that grass shortcut that we did, um, you can do it any which way, but the fastest way to do it is the way I just did it on that lap there. Cutting in and trying to get a propulsion off the correct pixels. Um, and trying to go really high up in the air. Not like that, but yeah, as you can see, I lost reserves because of that. Okay, let's just not do what we did last time. Thank you very much. Alright, there we go. Now there's a good Papu. So, that was what, 25, 25, 26 laps? It's pretty good. Um, I've had a couple 24 laps before, but um, yeah, that's absolutely fine. It's much better. That's much better. It's much more like it. So, Papu didn't eat enough big breakfast, sadly for him. So, he's now out of our way. Um, and... Uh, on that note, whilst we go to Hub 3, if Arctic has anything to say, now would be a good time. We do. Uh, we have a $5 donation from Tiny Tim saying, Hey all, donating for Hypno Shark and Crash Team Racing. Best of luck with the run and, oh, hi Arctic. Cheers, smiley face. Thank you for the donation, Tiny Tim. We also have a $15 donation from Murphy Steven saying, Look at my boy Hypno Go. Words cannot describe how proud I am, so I'll just leave a whoa baby here. Here's a little something towards a great cause and good luck to Sam on this run. And speaking of the donations we're all coming in here, we have hit over $15,000, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much to everybody donating right now. 
And for those of you that are enjoying this run after the event has finished and watching this as a VOD, you can still support Save the Children by donating through our Tiltify campaign using the link below the stream. Any and all support is much appreciated. Awesome, awesome. Alright, so... <laughs> in case you missed it, uh, Cortex got a little friendly with Dingo there at the start of lap 1. But uh, we still made the three shortcuts that are in this level, so we're fine. I just ran out of reserves. This doesn't bode well. Okay, let's see if we can still make them. That's a miracle. And... That's a miracle. Okay, nice. So, you shouldn't really be able to make those shortcuts without the turbo pad speed that I have right now. But I guess I didn't mini turbo enough. I didn't boost enough. And uh, that turned out to nearly be the death of me. But we're fine. So... Just got to nail this last lap. AI can be a bit annoying here getting in the way of the shortcut like Crash nearly did there. Uh, that is one instance where the AI can be really annoying on this track. But still fine. Got out of there alive and that's all that matters. That's one of those tracks where um, if you are... Uh, you can That's it a million times, but if you don't like, if if you're like on a really good run, you can just randomly fail it, uh, which has happened to me countless times. So, okay, Dragon Mines is next up. Uh, this track again in this year alone, 2020, it's gone through a lot of like smaller strats being found just because Dingo, um, and Dingo is like. It's only Dingo's only really been around like in terms of the speedrun like a year and a half, so stuff's being found and implemented all the time. Considering Coco and Engine had nearly two years to optimize, so uh, two years, two decades, sorry. Um, so the way of doing that minecart shortcut there, where we U-turned in, um, as previously discussed about the U-turn, um, downward input and then a direction and then square. Um, and then drift. Um, ideally, we can do a different strat um, if we have fire on lap two and three, where we U turn in, but then just froggy up all the way. Froggying, by the way, in case you missed, is where we uh, continuously jump to our maintain speed. Um, and that strat was implemented not too long ago, earlier this year. So. We're going to try and get this right now. I have plenty of reserves. As long as I don't hit the wall. Okay, let's see if we can do it. Ah, uh, not quite. Well, I kind of got it. But I didn't get the monster propulsion that I wanted that would have been really fast. But hopefully I'll be able to show it off in Komodo Joe, which is the third boss of this, uh, this hub. Uh, third boss of this hub. The third boss of this game. Okay. On this podium, I'm going to mash start and try and pause the game. Um, this is only possible in Hub 3 and Hub 4. During that little like cutscene where Uka says congratulations, you win a trophy, you can actually mash start if an Uka hint isn't about to come up. That's why it can't be done on Hub 1 and Hub 2. And you can get a pause and skip him saying congratulations, you win a trophy. Saves about two seconds every time. Very luck based, but uh, definitely worth going for for obvious reasons. Okay. If you've been in my stream, you'll know why this track is the worst, best thing ever. Um, I'm going to do a shortcut here where I turn around at the boost pad, drive back, and jump over the wall and make it to the other side, right? Pretty cool looking, but. There is a way to do it, but I'm going to attempt on lap 2 and lap 3, where you don't turn around at the boost pad and you just Hail Mary at the wall. I have only ever hit this once in a marathon, um, and no one else has ever hit it in a marathon. So if I hit it, it'd be kind of cool. So <laughs> here we go. Uh, time to get your Twitch clips out, or not, potentially. Alright, here we go going to concentrate a little bit here. <gasps> well, they, they should, you know, you know what? Easy game. Dude, this game isn't even that hard. Just get good or whatever. 
<laughs> okay, well, I have to go for it on lap three now, huh? How can I not? How can I not? It, it's it's the law. I've, I've got to do it. Alright. 40 lap is really good, obviously. I, I don't even need to say why. 39 is optimal, but doesn't matter. Alright, here we go. Two out of three. Easy game. No way. You are absolutely kidding. You, you <laughs> okay. You, you know what? Yeah. W w why not, game? You know what? I'm going to lose 23 seconds on Pappy's Pyramid, but I'm going to hit double boomerang in the marathon. Absolutely superb. This missile is not hitting me. That isn't real. Yeah. <sighs> There's an example of AI potentially being silly, but... That's... Uh, I can't believe that. That is absolutely unbelievable. Alright, let's see if I can get a pause here. Nice! Okay, so there's an example of me getting a pause and skipping Uka saying, like, congratulations, you win a trophy. Uh, the time save is self-explanatory, really. Um, it just skips the dialogue. Saves about two, two and a half, we estimate. We used to think that time save was about a second and a half to two seconds, but now we lean more on the side of two to two and a half saves quite a bit so this is actually one of the tracks tiny arena that before uh, or like moments before we figured out that dingo is faster um, there were strats made for him that kind of pushed him over the edge and passed Coco uh, so basically this is one of the many reasons why all of a sudden dingo <clears throat> overtook Coco as the fastest character Coco and engine um, and also, just as an aside, I know this track is called Tiny Arena, but if you think Tiny's better than Dingo, I, you know, you might not want to stick to opinions, because, you know, that's kind of incorrect. But anyway, anyway, I digress. Um, so, yeah, this track, you can you can kind of see why by the minimap, um, that... You know, this track is not nice to Dingo at all with all the turns. Because, um, yeah, you can just imagine Dingo is has the worst turn stat in the game. So, you kind of have to sacrifice reserves just to make the turns. Which isn't ideal. Um, but if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. So, yeah. Um... So yeah, well, one example of that, for example, is just here. We can't really make this turn without U-turning, so we're just going to do that, lose our speed, but then hopefully get double propulsions there, like that. And that's like a perfect start to lap two, honestly. Uh, this is going to be a really good lap. Um, a, an optimal lap is one flat. Um, you can get a one flat. I usually get low 101s, and I call that a good lap, but this lap is absolutely ridiculous this might be a one flat here that's insane okay that might be a one flat we'll have to wait and see oh easy wow okay that's a ridiculous lap um yeah in an ideal world i go 102 one flat one flat here um Come to think of it, this hub 3 has just been incredible. <laughs> this has been... If it wasn't for Papus, this could have been on world record pace. Anyway. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Um, as I come to the end of this track, um, I'm pretty sure... Um, I have nothing else to really say. You guys get the gist. So I'll hand it over to Argic if he has anything to say then. That's dope. Can't very much. We do. We have a lot of love coming in for you here, mate. Awesome, uh, we've awesome. got a 128 dollar donation from Xandor saying let's all have a wonderful weekend with a wonderful stream and thank you for your wonderful donation my friend there we also have a 15 dollar donation from Cameron Vengeance 234 saying hey Hypno love this game growing up it's crazy to just see you crush it like it's nothing I couldn't even finish the outside race as a kid I'm a big fan of your speedrun skill, patience, and practice of abstinence. I will definitely be following your channel after this. I have no idea who that is. And you've also got a $5 donation from Oryx saying, Hello gamers, great to see this beautiful game. I had a great time playing Tiny Tiger as a kid. Also pay attention, this run beats a world record. Good luck. Well, 
I mean, it could have beaten the world record. <laughs> it still can. Yeah, yeah, just believe hard enough, it's fine. Exactly. Um, all jokes aside, it can definitely marathon world record, I think, so that, that's hype. But, uh, okay, here we go. I am going to pray that Komodo Joe doesn't get a star boost. Very good. If he does get a star boost here, as previously mentioned, he puts back TNTs and Nitros. That's kind of like his thing. So, if he gets a star boost, there is like a semi good chance that he just puts a Nitro in my face right off the bat and I lose 5 seconds. So, it's very scary if he gets a star boost and you kind of just have to respect it and just stay away from him. But uh, luckily he didn't, so we're fine. Uh, that being said, because we're just faster than him, we might catch up to his Nitros, which can be scary for lap 2 and 3, especially lap 3. That's unfortunate. I might die here. I'm going to die here. Yep, that's fine. At least we didn't fall off, it's so whatever. Because if you fall off on that uh, minecart shortcut, you get respawned, not on the bridge, but all the way back at the uh, <clears throat> at the start of like the minecart entrance. So that's like straight up eight seconds lost if you die there. It's really bad. Um, so hopefully I can get the strat here, come on. Hey, there you go. That's what the strat's supposed to look like. Um, you can just get like a really high jump off the minecart and uh, make it and get like a 24 lap, a low 24. That was really good. That lap three. We'll not talk about the lap two, but <laughs> the lap one and three were really good. So that's nice. Okay. So. Three bosses down, two to go, one hub world to go. This hub world is probably the most nerve-wracking if you're on pace for obvious reasons, but also because the tracks in it are just ridiculously hard, and two of them even have their own tech, which will never be seen again. So, The first track of this hub world is called Engine Labs. Uh, the tech that I'm talking about is called USF, or Ultra Sacred Fire, or Ultimate Sacred Fire, however you want to call it. Uh, however you want to say it. Um, so, basically, as previously mentioned, your reserves are the right you have to keep the speed that you currently have. And reserves are gained through mini turbos and just boosts in general. So, with that in mind, what USFs factor in is the reserves you've built up, and they store all that and just turn it into raw speed, basically. So, what you're going to see here is I'm going to not jump off this turbo pad coming up and I'm going to go really fast like this. It's way more obvious the next time we do it in about 20 seconds um, because we'll try and keep the speed for about 15 seconds ish. Um, so, but yeah, only certain turbo pads in the game have it. Um, every single track in hub 4 has it and that is it however also here's the speed that i was talking about you can just hop over holes with it how fast it is but um yeah all four tracks in this hub world have it and that's it these are the only four tracks in the game that have it but you won't be seeing it in two of the tracks because there's skips that we do that skips the turbo pads we give it so even though you won't be seeing USF in those two tracks, you'll be seeing skips, so it's still very, uh, very nerve-wracking. Um, but yeah, this is, I, I would say for sure, the easiest track in Hub 4, but that's really not saying too much, because it's still easily, you know, you can still easily mess up. Um, I know a PB that I had at one point, uh, this was its main time save. Because of stuff like that, you just you turn too early and you just lose time. So because obviously hitting a wall takes away your speed and your reserves. <clears throat> oh my lord! <laughs> okay, uh, that's movement, I guess. I mean, technically, t technically that counts as movement. Um, but yeah, actually, I might want to just go off this turbo pad just for reserves' sake. Because after hitting that wall, I lost a couple. So, might just want to do that, just to make sure that this USF is kept all the way and that it doesn't run out 
Because if I don't have enough reserves, I'll start with the USF and then it'll just fade away slowly. So. Okay. <clears throat> Going for a pause. Got the pause, very nice. See, if I got two pauses in just a normal run, I'd actually be really happy with that. So, yeah, I'll take that for sure. That's very decent. Um, Cortex Castle is probably the hardest track in the game that doesn't have an unintentional skip. Um, and it's not really because, like, it's super difficult. It's just because the character we're playing with has the worst turn in the game. Um, which means all of these 90 degree turns have to be, like, planned out before you even reach them. Because you have to factor in, like, your character's really bad turn stat. So, I just enabled the minimap so you guys can see it. There are tons of just 90 degree turns in this level. So, not exactly Dingo's favorite level, but we can still do it. Here's the USF here. Um... And sadly it ran out. And th there's an example of it running out. I just didn't have enough reserve stored. Um, so it just kind of petered out on me, which is a shame. But actually that is a shame because now I lost like a second to that, which may not seem too bad. But now all of a sudden the spider cycles are going to be a little bit different to what I'm used to. Because similarly to the sewer speedway barrels mentioned earlier, um, all these spiders are on a cycle similarly to the barrels. So, this is going to be a little awkward. However, we should be fine. Nice missile. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, because of this... Yeah, the spider... So, usually the spider's down there, whereas instead it was up. Um, which, I guess, means next lap it will be down, if I remember correctly. I guess we'll see if I'm right. Um... But either way, um, you can just go inside the spider. Like, there is a little gap in between the spider and the wall where you can just go in between. Um, so we should be fine no matter what. Um, that was weird movement. I'm actually going to go off this for reserves. Okay. Right. So because I don't have too many reserves, I'm just going to instantly froggy. Because I know that they're going to run out and I want to maintain the speed. And, uh, yeah. And there's an example of me going in between the little gap there. And, uh, just getting in there and crossing the line. So. Okay. Final four tracks. If you're on world record at this point, the heart is racing. Your hands are sweaty. Mum's spaghetti. It's very rough. Um. And, uh. I would argue that these two tracks, aside from the one we just got out of, Cortex Castle, are the hardest two tracks in the game. Um, little miscellaneous strat, I was looking backwards at the star there to reduce lag. Um, it only works on some tracks, but Hot Air Skyway is one of them. Um, it only saves like two frames or something silly. But, okay, more importantly, we're going to turn around here, and then jump down and stick close to the wall so the game doesn't count us out of bounds and then get to here. The reason why we had to drive all the way downward, and also here's a very easy shortcut that saves like 15 seconds. Um, the reason why we had to drive all the way up there is because this game loads the next part of the track um, depending on where you are on the track. So for example, if I was to just drop down here and just not go all the way up here, the game would think, oh, you haven't loaded this part of the track, so there's no way you could reach it. So it counts us out of bounds and spawns us back up here. However, because the game loaded in this part of the track, the game thinks, oh, it's kind of normal that you're here, even though it's a little bit sketchy, but whatever, we'll allow it. Um, so that's why we have to do that, basically. Um, you'll be seeing that again in the next track, and... This track and the next track are the only two tracks left in the game because the boss of this hub world um, is uh, in this track and the and the final boss, sorry, is on the next track. So this is well and truly the gauntlet as it's known <laughs> in the community. Nearly didn't make that. Got a lucky speed ghost there. 
Right, I have to avoid the AI. This is scary. Good. The amount of times the AI there has killed my run. Also, I'm going to go for the shortcut that's only useful on lap 3. I barely missed it. The reason why that's only useful on lap 3 um, is because you want the turbo pad that's just behind that turn for every other lap. Whereas there it doesn't really matter because the finish line is right there. So you, you really have no reason for fire on that last straight. Or no reason for reserves anyway. Two out of six pauses is really good honestly. I'll, I'll take that. Um, the chances are stacked well in the game's favour for you not getting the pause. So that's totally fine. Okay, three tracks left. Okay, this track, again, AI can definitely be scary here because uh, you're going to be turning around after loading an area, which means going head-on into the AI. Um, so let's see how this goes. This is always terrifying when you're on world record pace. Okay, Polar hit me, but I didn't bonk or anything, so that's completely fine. I'm down with that. And then we get on the railing and drop down to the part where we loaded the track. And luckily, we can just drop down here and we don't even have to, like, drive anywhere and turn around. The track below us is already loaded. Um, the very easy shortcut. In fact, if you're learning this game, uh, there are three shortcuts I'd recommend you. And two of them are the one in Higher Skyway, which I just did, where you jump over the wall. And the other one is that one where... You just jump over the uh, the wall and land on the lower section. That's unfortunate. Just went a little bit too fast. Let's see if I can get the back up. Good back up. Okay. That's fine. Um, so yeah, again, the reason why we have to drop down first is to load the, to load the level. And we just get on this railing. And then just drop down. Yeah, that one there. I, I don't recommend doing the first shortcut if you're starting out. That should be probably the last shortcut you learn, to be completely honest. Um, but, yeah, that shortcut there, anyone can do that. Uh, it's it's not really that hard. Well, having said that, I have been known to choke <laughs> on that shortcut for no reason. So, maybe I'm not one to talk. Get up on the wall, very nice. No AI in sight, very cool. If I didn't mess up on lap 2... There's a chance that the AI would have been there on lap 3 as well as lap 1. Um, and that would have been really dumb. But because I messed up, they weren't. But yeah, if I was on like world record pace, I would have had to deal with the AI there again. So again, very scary level uh, is Oxide Station. And uh, yeah, for the final time, uh, I will hand it over to Argic if he has anything to say. We do indeed. We got some more donations here. We got a $100 donation from Beef saying CTR is the best card game, in my opinion. Good luck with the run. And we also have a $20 donation from Mediocre Pixels with no message there. But thank you, everybody, for your donations. Do please keep them coming in. As the very next run, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog does have the character bid war going on right now. Ray the Flying Squirrel is currently in the lead with $160, but Mighty the Armadillo isn't far behind with $120.54. Can you snipe it? Or will Sonic come from $105 all the way up and take the lead? Your donations can make all the difference, and don't forget they are all going to save the children. Very good, very good. All right. So as I said before, Pinstripe, shoots out bombs but they're not really going to be too much of an issue as long as i don't mess up here just got to do the same shortcuts as before again the uh <laughs> i hope the hairpin shortcut that i messed up on um on lap three last time i'll be able to hit this time um because yeah that'd be nice to show off in a marathon because again i don't i don't think that one's been done in a marathon because uh the hairpin shortcut only recently got implemented so because again, with Coco, it's like really difficult. But with Dingo's speed stat, which is the reason he's picked over Coco, um, he's able to make it. So we'll see if I can be able to do that. It'd be nice to get. But for now, just concentrating on not messing up. We, we have to land, actually. That's something to mention. Um, not only when I do this shortcut, I hit the wall because Dingo's turn is really, really bad. But also, when I do that first shortcut, I'm trying not to land too far forward. 
because when I'm uh, when I'm going up there before even going for the shortcut and like loading the track, um, I'm trying to optimize it so that I load just enough. Because obviously I'm driving, you know, in the direction I don't want to go. I'm driving forward when I I really want to be doing this and turning around. So I want to be turning around as quickly as possible. But that means sometimes if I land too far forward when going down here, I load in the part of the track that's unloaded. Or I land, sorry, in the part of the track that's unloaded. And that has killed plenty of runs. I think that killed a run yesterday, actually. But, okay, hairpin one last time to see if we can do it. Oi, there you go. Okay, nice. I'm happy I got to show that off in the marathon. Dang, this, this run has been really good besides Papu's, honestly. Got to show off hairpin, boomerang. That's really good. All right, final boss time. So we beat him fair and square, as he says himself. Uh, we definitely didn't use eight shortcuts in total. That didn't happen. Um, sorry, seven shortcuts in total. That definitely didn't happen. No siree. Um, <clears throat> and here's the final boss. So the guy that we've got to stop from turning the world into a concrete parking lot. Yes, very compelling story. So <clears throat> here we go. So I, again... Sub two minutes here is ideal, but that's pretty hard. Um, I usually aim for like two flat um, if I don't mess up. But there is one last piece of RNG, well two technically, but this one isn't as important. Basically he can get in the way of me going for the shortcut here, but it's very rare. I'm going to missile him. <laughs> I tried. And um, the second piece of RNG, if I don't mess up, you'll be able to see it on lap three. Um, and that is, Oxide's gimmick is all the items that the boss has used, he's using all of them. And it just so happens that on lap three, at the start, he uses potions, which is Papu's uh, power up. Um, this is annoying because the potions can just block the shortcut and you just can't do it. Or it makes it very awkward to do it. Um, so, hopefully that doesn't happen. We haven't messed up yet. So, hopefully you'll be able to see that. I went round the boost. That sucks, but it's fine. We made it. It was a little bit slow, but it's chill. It's fine. Um, okay, here we go. Last lap. So, again, there'll be green potions. There should be about eight of them. There's usually eight of them. Uh, four groups of uh, twos. And, uh, yeah, let's see what we get here. Okay, so there's... Okay, there's none in the way. That was very good RNG. That was incredibly good. Nitro down here? Not in the way. Very good. I've actually lost a world record to a Nitro on lap 3 just being as soon as I landed. Uh, which is very unfortunate, but there you go. Very good Oxide, honestly, uh, for a marathon. That was very decent. Uh, time is coming up once I cross the finish line, so just keep that in mind. Um, and after this, I will show off the uh, the battle mode wrong walk glitch. Uh, but yeah, for now, time. Wow, that was, I think, that was marathon world record, if I'm not mistaken. It, it felt good, I'm not sure what the final time is yet, but it felt very good. So, I'll take it. I'll take it. I think it might have been like a 51.30 would be my estimate, probably. Um, we are patiently waiting for the uh, for the stream to catch up, but I believe <laughs> you are correct. Uh, maybe just over. Hell yeah. Yeah, um, Marathon World Record was 51.36. And I uh, think... You, yeah. I believe it was a 51.20 is what I'm saying. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's go. But Time yeah. stopped way early because of stream delay, keep that in mind. Okay, way early? Okay. That's no problem. That's no problem. It, it's still... Pr well, with marathon timing, it started six seconds early as well. So, I think it might have been like a 51.14 if it didn't stop early. But yeah, either way, good run. Um, so yeah, we stopped Oxide. Yeehaw, we did it. We saved the world. Um, and now... I'm going to break the game. <laughs> so I'm going to skip these credits here. And, uh, okay. 
So, I have two controllers now. Uh, that will be very important. I'm going to quit out of this file, but that won't be the last we'll see of it. Um, because, again, this glitch is very, very weird. Um, so, I'm going to be picking Dingo in Play 1. Actually, let, let's have some fun. Let's pick Fake Crash. Why not? Um, and I'm going to pick Engine for Player 2. Um, I'm going to pick Rocky Road. This is very important. I'm going to put Player 1 in Team 2. And player 2 in team 4. I'm going to set it to life limit mode. And the only item I'm going to have on is a potion. So with this setup, for some reason, I can now change the game's like memory into thinking that it should want to put me somewhere else. So if I just kill myself here. It says that player 2 got 2nd and player 1 got 4th, even though I hit myself and there's only 2 players. So this is already looking very weird. Um, if I hit retry again, I'm going to do this twice. And again, for some reason, doing this once uh, just tricks the game into thinking that um, it wants to warp you some somewhere else. And the amount of times you do it changes that into thinking it wants to warp you somewhere else. So two times is going to warp us into the adventure mode of um, of the file that we recently went into because it still has that in memory, as you can see. But now I'm fake crash, so this makes no sense. I am fake crash in a dingo file. I just put down the wrong controller. I'm very clever. And I am going to go <laughs> into ruse tubes. So... Yeah, the game is completely broken. I'm playing as a character that I shouldn't be able to play as in this mode, like, at all. Um, but the game... Nice movement. <laughs> the game still thinks I'm in battle mode, and this is going to have some knock-on effects here. I'm going to go into Ruse Tubes, because in this uh, state, I can only enter five tracks. I can enter all the Relic Races, but I can only enter five tracks where the AI appear. Uh, by the way, the Relic Races and the CTR tokens is what you need for 101 percent i should point that out um so we're the only ai well we're the only person here and all the ai are gone should i say um instead of a lap count there's now a three in the top right which is our life count which is weird um and we're just free to do whatever and you may think oh well the only way to get out of this state is to complete three laps because you're in a race psych um, as you can see, it's now down to two, because we have ourselves, and now it's down to one. And if I do this one more time... Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know either. So, I don't know what makes the game do this, but now, as you can see by that, like, weird thing in the top left, and the Wumper, some of these textures are going to be really weird now. As you can see, I... <laughs> I have things happening on the screen. It's very good. Um, if I did the, uh, battle mode glitch 19 times, for example, um, yeah, if I did it 19 times, it would walk me to the credits, and then, by doing this in that state, I can actually trick the game into thinking that I've beaten a token, and beat a token in, like, 40 seconds, as opposed to doing 3 laps. Sometimes even less than 40 seconds, sometimes, like, 20 seconds. Um, which saves a lot in 101%, saves about 7 minutes. And the last thing I'm going to show you in this state is, if I hit change setup, you see a screen that I don't know why Naughty Dog put this screen in, because you can't get to this screen, um, because battle mode only allows two players, and you can't get to this screen without having two controllers, so I don't know why this screen exists, but it does. Um, sadly for us, because it'd be amazing to go into a battle with only one player. But, yeah, as you can see, all the textures are very messed up. For some reason, besides only Polar Purr and Fake Crash, but even then, their cars are completely screwed up. Um, and yeah, if I try going back in, obviously, I I don't know why, again, that screen was made, because there's I can only like go in with two players or more, so it makes no sense, but... Yeah, alright, that's the Glitch Showcase. Um, I'll uh, plug stuff now, I guess. Um, I stream this game daily, pretty much. 
um, twitch.tv forward slash hypnoshark, yeehaw. Um, shout outs to the community, you're all absolutely incredible. Um, and uh, shout outs to the Sonic blog that's coming up next. So, yeah, please feel free to donate, it's a great cause. And uh, yeah, awesome. All right.